I get into it, kind of want to see how um, this episode of Inside Star Citizen is. Uh, loot in route. It's very exciting stuff. This is related to um, persistence and looting, and uh, I'm very excited to see what uh, they have in store with us. So let's let's quickly review it and let's see uh, some of our thoughts. All right, let's let's get let's get right into it. For me, when it comes to exploring areas in a game, I tend to prefer when I've earned something. So when you've had to fight to get past some people to get somewhere, you expect there to be something cool to find, something to make it worthwhile. There are just some things that you just don't go and buy in a store, things that you have to go out and find. That's, I feel, one of the most important aspects of gaming. I've often found that if there's no tangible reward, whether it's something that you bring away from there or something that you find that maybe leads to something else to discover, that something can be lost in the experience of exploration. Imagine you go into some dungeon you're excited to explore. Yeah, Jonathan, I know. It's, it's unfortunate. There's NPCs there just kind of standing around, but there's nothing to find. There's, there's crates, but they're empty. There's storage with nothing in it. Not only is it disappointing from a gameplay perspective, you don't get any of the cool loot you were hoping for, but it just doesn't make sense. What were all these people doing there with no food, no supplies, nothing? You want there to be something amazing at the end. So we're working on this new system called Loot Generation. We have built this system on the foundation of the Harvestable system which is going to empower our designers to set up locations all across the verse uh, to be filled with dynamically generated loot. They function using a system we've called Loot Archetypes. Right. So before we move forward, I just kind of want to give my thoughts on, on this, this whole thing. Um, one of the main reasons why I got involved with Star Citizen is the fact that they, they sold to me the idea of being able to go out um into the unknown explore um bringing all the equipment and gear that you need whether, whether it's um weapons uh, for security medical supplies um food and all those kind of things right and that's and, and one of the things that did sell me in um that they were able to sell to me was the Carrick itself being the ultimate exploration ship. So that's, I fell in love with the Carrick immediately as soon as I heard about it, as soon as I saw it, I fell in love with that. Simply because I wanna be able to go out and explore every now and then, you know what I mean? So one of the key things that's gonna be important is a looting system, right? Giving or uh, having a reason for people to go out and explore and look for things. You know, I wanna be able to go out and find things that nobody else has found before you know not just regular loot that you'll find at stores but i want to find unique items that that are collectibles or um you just you're not going to find anywhere you're not going to find anywhere and i, I want to be able to just go out and explore and look for those unique items whether i want to sell it for a really high um profit and things like that so um yeah, so I'm really excited to the fact that now they're talking about looting and looting will be in. Um, I think we'll get a little bit of looting in 315, um, from my understanding. If not, maybe by the end of the year. Um, but this is very exciting. Um, coming along with looting, of course, it's also going to be persistent itself. So I think we're going to get our, our first iteration on um, iCash as well so this 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 kind of thing is really exciting for me to be able to look go exploring and to loot and, and to find some interesting things which are on the fly generated sets of tags so the idea is that a designer can lay out a list of uh tags that they want items in the loot pool to match and then maybe some that they don't so you can say i want I want things that are tagged with weapon, but not things that are tagged with ammunition. And then what really makes it powerful is it's not just a uniform distribution of, okay, we have all of these potential items, just pick one at random. 
when the designers are specifying tags to use, they can assign a weight to each one and say, I want rifles with a weight of 5, and I want pistols with a weight of 10. So you're twice as likely to get a pistol in this crate. So we have like mm. full control over how many items spawn, uh, what specifically spawns. We could even, if we wanted to, and I've actually been doing the tagging for this myself, we could actually tell a loot archetype, hey, spawn me a bunch of armor that's red. Your loot archetype could have the weapon. Yeah, it looks like the, 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 the team that built the tech for this, man, they, they really planned this out for the future. You know, they're, they're giving the, 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 the gameplay team um, access to so much customization in terms of um, the kinds of loot that they, you'll, they'll be able to spawn into um, different locations based on where it is and what time, uh, maybe um, whether there's conflict or whether there isn't conflict or whether it's a pirate location, whether it's a, it's a high security location. You know what I mean? So it, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, it looks like... Uh, yeah, it, it's um it it'll allow them to um implement risk and reward, so you can really find some really really high value loot in highly secure areas or high very dangerous areas, and will give artists the ability to to do that. Rodolfo, what's going on? How are you doing tonight? Yeah, so let's uh let's continue, man. Dot FPS dot rifle tag as an example, and that would then give you the option of all of the weapons that spawn underneath that, uh, or that are populated underneath that tag structure. And you may then have armor.fps.heavy, which would give you all of the selection of the heavy armors under that. And then it could be gadget.medkit. So you would then have a loot archetype that says, give me any rifle or any heavy piece of armor or any medkit. It's been a lot of work to get it working that way, but all of it sort of works in conjunction with each other and with some of the future stuff coming down the pipe as well, such as Quanta. The loot generation system actually will read from the parent object containers that we use in, in the game. All right, so I did see this earlier. Um, so my, my commentary on this is, I don't know how I feel about this interface right here. So to me personally, you know, I think this is ugly. <laughs> um, find nice work in the channel, passing by to leave a follow, night and um bedtime here. Godspeed. Thank you, thank you, Rodolfo. Appreciate it, man. I really appreciate the support, man. Have a good one. You know, I find this ugly. Like, I hope this is not final or anything. I'm I'm assuming this is not final. I mean, like I don't like this blue um, artificial reality depiction of a physical object. Um, I rather them go towards the direction of um, Escape from Tarkov. Like in Escape from Tarkov, the loot, um, the inventory. Um, so when you when you find items in in a container or wherever, you actually see the physical item, like how it actually looks like. I rather them go in that direction than using artificial reality type of depiction of the item because this this looks ugly to me it doesn't look in, it doesn't look interesting it just everything just looks blue you know i'm assuming this is not what they're intending in terms of the final look but um if they are going to go with artificial reality i think they should they should touch up on these things i want to be able to identify what type of gun it is right all three of these guns look exactly the same to me right you know so if they actually implement the actual visuals even if they do it um using artificial reality type of um type of aesthetic it should look similar to the actual object um but i'm, I'm assuming this is just a placeholder and it's not the final look of it but that's just um that's how the personal inventory is right now yeah i'm a, um jonathan i know um i'm assuming that's gonna change i hope it does because it's honestly ugly to me to see just everything is blue boring plain like it's not interesting the inventory 
the inventory system does not look interesting to me at all but i think they're just right now working on core tech and if this is what they're using as just a temporary placeholder i'm perfectly fine with it um but hopefully the final look will look more interesting just 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 my thoughts Coming on down that. the pipe as well such as quanta the loot generation system actually will read from the parent object containers that we use in in the game at the moment so say you're spawning containers on hurston your main object container would be hurston and then let's say you've got lawville which would be l19 and then inside that you might have uh let's say that we expand the city and there's like a an abandoned hovel underneath that's maybe occupied by pirates if quanta decides oh okay so authorities came cleared that place out that place is now no longer a pirate base it's now storage site for hurston dynamics then all of the containers in that area then might switch to be containing hurston equipment Quant jonathan that was a good question the the new star map looked um i think i seen it like two years ago um i i believe this is still gonna take a while but it looked beautiful man um i don't I, I remember i was very very impressed with it it looked really really pretty um with the new star map but um, i'm assuming it's, it's still a long ways away and um it's gonna it's gonna work along with the probing mechanic as well so i, I believe it's gonna take a while but uh yeah i don't know maybe we might see it sooner than than we think but um it looked really cool i look forward to seeing that though once i can then determine way up the chain way at the top this is how things are now happening because ai has moved in things have happened things have changed and the 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 archetypes and the the loot generation system reacts on the fly to that so if quanta was to decide this planet has been raided it's been full of conflict there's been wars here like people are leaving in droves because it's not safe to be here anymore the the status of that planet the the richness of that planet lowers as well to the point where then the loot generation system says okay where most of these containers might have been 50 to 60 percent full as they were now we're only going to fill them up to like 20 to 30 percent it's all about adapting on the fly to where you're at what you're doing and seeing what can be so where we're at right now is uh we've got a, a pretty solid base for in it is it is exciting um when they implement this thing with with quantum itself it's going to be interesting where everything is just essentially going to be dynamic whether there is conflict like i was mentioning before or if it's a highly secure area or if it's a place that's just not even monitored at all you know we're going to see different kinds of loot and um the risk the risk and reward is also going to be applied all across the board so it's going to be interesting like a, a space um a star system like pyro is probably going to have some really interesting loot there um but it, of course it's going to be a little bit dangerous right so um i look forward to i look forward to that um i'm interested to seeing um what they come up with in the next upcoming patches and um, i'm very excited about that internal testing we're trying out marking up a few different locations with some containers, mainly filled with weapons and armor at the moment, but we are hoping to expand that to other items in the future. And we hope that it provides an immersive experience more than anything else, that people can get excited about this sort of thing, that they know that when they go to a planet once, they might go back a few weeks later and it's just completely different. <laughs> Loot That's is funny. an essential part of any MMO, and when it arrives later this year, it'll be one more step towards fulfilling the, the exploration-based promise of Star Citizen's persistent universe. But up next, we've got a special Oops! It's All BFX edition of the Spirit Report, so let's get to it. To start things off this week, if you remember from our last Sprint Report, we showed how the team had been working on an update to the Thruster Dust System that converts the existing particles from a radial effect to a directional one that's actually based on the thruster direction to any surface normal it may be hitting at any given moment. That is now so this cool. causes the effect to change not only by the raycast angle being perpendicular or parallel to the surface, but also the strength of the thruster output, the type of surface itself, and the force of the surrounding wind volume. And you can see here how that tech has progressed in the weeks since we showed it. Now, while this update showcases the progress made since then and still has a little ways to go, 
folks are already thinking about the myriad of tactical uses this feature might have in things like the upcoming Jump Town 2, over bodies of water like rivers and oceans, and even against the soft body objects like those seen in the upcoming colonialism outposts. Alpha 314 cool. sees the initial implementation of Orison, but the work doesn't stop there. And coming up in a subsequent patch, the VFX team is currently working <laughs> on tech crazy. that uses vector fields around the player character's feet to disturb the various piles of cherry blossom leaves that tend to accumulate around the commercial and residential areas. Now, while the first implementation of this tech will be Orison, the team is already looking ahead to utilizing it in other areas, including on vehicles. So let your imaginations run wild with that one. Oh, wow. Are you serious? Right, no. They're planning to do this on vehicles as well. So if you're driving through, let's say, on some, some sort of terrain where there's a lot of sand and stuff like that, or a lot of debris on the ground and stuff like that, like as you drive through like your vehicle will be pushing it out of the way man that's gonna be really cool man like they're, they're really trying to immerse they're trying to immerse you all throughout <laughs> your star citizen experience from the time you log in all the way to the time you log off man that's crazy man like they're going so deep in terms of development it's crazy like they're doing a lot of things that they don't need to do but they're the fact that they're attempting it is is it's just quite impressive um i'm really excited to, i'm really interested to see how this this will turn out um yeah yeah this 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 is, this is gonna be cool to see not that wild and while we're talking leaves the team recently completed oh, a that. sprint adding rotation effects to gpu screen space colliding particles utilizing the velocity of an object to determine the amount and size of turn applied to leaves making for a much more organic looking effect as they blow oh, over the wow. edge of a surface and fall to wherever down below. And we're pleased to Are report that this feature was working so nicely, it actually just went into PTU builds last week for Alpha 314. Wow. Currently in the Persistent Universe, weapon impacts on ships occur in what's called the ship zone, which causes the impact effects like sparks and such to stick to the ship, meaning it essentially gets carried along with it as it moves forward, which looks unnatural. But in a recent sprint, this was remedied so that now the effects yo, trail behind on, as the I ship didn't... moves away from the original bro, point of yo, impact. Yo, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know he's talking about the sparks, <laughs> but check out how interesting this combat scene is. Just a whole bunch of hammerheads just slugging at each other right now. Like this is like this is giving us some insight on what um combat is going to be looking like man when when you have like multiple like two orcs going at each other and they're bringing their big guns man this looks so cool it just looks so cool to Stick me to the ship meaning it essentially gets carried along with it as it moves forward which looks unnatural but in a recent sprint this was remedied so that now the effects trail behind as the ship moves away from the original point of impact much as one Look would expect that. them to now it's a little thing, but at the core of building an immersive universe are hundreds and hundreds of little things adding up to a universe that functions or behaves in believable and expected ways. And here's a second look at the same system in Atmo, where you can see the sparks fly up into the air against gravity in the old system, and now falling down to the surface as you'd expect them to in the new. Oh, cool. The VFX team is also exploring several different destruction mosaics for the space station orbiting above in the Crossroads of Crime map for Theaters of War. Since these destructions being explored are simulation based in the Houdini software, these mosaics utilizing various factors of stiffness and damping ratio allow for a degree of art direction not normally available. Plus, it just kind of looks cool to see all the different ways the thing can explode, you know? Oh. Also, always cool. It is the worst looking exciting, now, man. Now, previously, Can't wait until we actually our games on. suffered from a number of different maladies, including poor performance and poor scaling effects. But due to recent <laughs> R&D by the team and the use of instanced scale multipliers and ribbons, the team has not only found a way to author these same effects at a wide range of scales, but the use of ribbons reduces the need for high particle counts in the runtime GPU particle system. What's Bro. that mean? If 
this is so cool like just imagine storms on planets while you're flying and you're you're dealing with the um the turbulences um while you're in atmosphere and you're seeing thunder sometimes and maybe like you're seeing uh lightning hitting you and you know and you're trying to avoid it and man it's going to be interesting especially even even space clouds right if you if you if you if you're in a nebula where it's sort of like a space storm and there's some lightning in there like the coil it's going to be so cool man this is int this is really cool i really like this it means more developers can use more lightning in more areas without destroying their performance budget and that's especially good news for the upcoming pyro system and the visual revamp ooh, to the Dying Star map pyro? and Arena Commander that's currently underway. Ooh. And wrapping up our look at VFX and, this week. And there's a new map for Arena Commander. So they're going to be updating Arena Commander. Here's my suspicion. We're going to get the new updated Arena Commander with Theaters of War. That's what I feel. I feel like that's what they're doing. But that's, that's just my uh, suspicion. That's currently underway. In wrapping up our look at VFX this week, the team has returned from a brief hiatus away from fire propagation to create their version of a concept. A cinematic look dev, if you will, at the goals for fire propagation, utilizing the tech features and progress already in hand. What you see here is a basic electrical fire in a relatively high tech environment, exploring the type of propagation effects the team are currently pursuing. Now, as a test exclusively for how the fire moves and spreads throughout wow. the ship, there are still a number of limiting visual factors here, like the still outstanding shader work that will wow. one day make the fire feel even more alive than it already does. As that the is fire amazing, moves across man. the white surface Whoa. that is flammable. Oh man, I just, it just the thought just hit me, man. Imagine. Just imagine like you get into combat and the fire breaks out in your ship so not only you're fighting the enemy the enemy ship you need crew <laughs> to fight the fire <laughs> in your ship bro that is gonna be so cool to be trying to prevent your ship from being destroyed just imagine like you're on a long distance journey you're in a Carrick with a crew of maybe eight guys and you run into some pirates, you survive the fight and there's a fire that breaks out during that fight. You got to try to salvage as much as you can because you need to survive. You're dealing with oxygen lost. You're dealing with um, property damage. You don't want, let's say you have a rover in your hangar. You don't want it to get destroyed. You know what I mean? And so it, it's going to be very important to have some people on the ship that will immediately deal with the fire or else you're all dead. <laughs> it's so cool. They didn't have to do this, but they're doing it. And I love it. It's it's. I mean, look at this, man. Look how realistic it, 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 it is. You can see it dripping down to ignite the same surface below. Look at while that. Interacting with the black glass like surface on the ceiling that is understandably resistant. Combined mm. with the heat and noxious gases affecting players via the actor status system, it's an exciting look ahead at some of the new dangers and hazards players will encounter and have to deal with on a regular basis as Star Citizen's development continues. But before we let you go, let's jump ahead and see what happens when you ignore the fire wow, look at that. and let it go about its business for about half an hour. Wow. You don't want this to happen to your 600. <laughs> <laughs> That's an expensive ship. <laughs> so what did we oh, learn this week? Oh man, that's an expensive ship, man. Well, we learned that while wow, it's wow, 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 wow. That's cool. That's cool. I'm liking it, man. I'm liking the progress. It's it's uh I'm really excited. I'm really excited to see what we're going to get by the end of this year. I'm excited to see how the game is going to look like by the end of this year. And I'm more so excited to see maybe hopefully mid-year next year to see how this game is going to look, man. I'm really excited for the new stuff. I'm glad that most of the core tech is, is essentially finished. Um, like your um, physical inventory, your server meshing, your iCache and all that. I'm glad that they're at, at the, the, uh, the back end of their 
um, journey in terms of getting these things um, out. And uh, so I think we're, we're at a point where we're going to start seeing more gameplay, more content in, in Star Citizen. It's, it, it excites me. Hopefully it excites you guys. Uh, Mystician, what's going on, man? How you doing tonight, man? But yeah, um, for for um, that's it. That's my review for 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 Inside Star Citizen for this week. Hopefully you guys like it. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. All right, I also stream on Twitch, so make sure to check my links down below. Give me a follow.